hello people this is valerie welcome back to my channel this is valen dude's channel and this is a video i promised myself i will have to do before the end of this year yes this is a video i have been promising to do before the end of the year however it has taken me so long to record it because sometimes i want to do it and i'm like oh maybe tomorrow maybe next time so today we are december today is december 21st before we hit the new year i told myself i'm gonna do this video for you okay if you're new kindly like and subscribe and if you return me i will really appreciate that you ask me questions on the comment section below i know by now everybody's asking me what is this video what is this video but as you can see on the title today i'm going to address about i'm going to be addressing or i'm going to be filming on how we planned the wedding I hope you're enjoying this video anyway that being said let's dive in i want to come and record today i want to about the way we plan the wedding as you all know it's one of the wedding 2018 that achieved 20 not 20 as of today but as of 2018 it achieved 18 million views on youtube and as you asking yourself which one is this what wedding is this but it's the wedding with the entrance called yes i do by willie paul and eileen this is something that we planned so that we didn't have any idea that's gonna go viral just a disclaimer we did not plan for it we did not advertise for it we did not we did nothing on the background to say that so that it can go viral however it's just a fun favorite and that's something that happens randomly to so many people out there which happened to us okay so the first thing i'm going to start with is how did we plan the wedding we did plan the wedding at the big we started planning the wedding at the beginning of march 2017 I remember my my now current husband was always asking me that we should start planning the wedding because he was told that booking our place will take up to one year because a lot of people do book ahead of time and I was reluctant. I'm like, no, we're going to just do it next year. He was like, no, we're going to do it. We're going to do it on like we have to do it. We have to start planning right now. I'm like, OK, then if you say so, let's do it. OK. So therefore, I remember we went to visit about three wedding halls, three wedding halls. And I remember in those three wedding halls, we didn't see anything that was really pleasing. Even the hall that we had ended up booking was among the uh, halls that we had visited. The only reason why we picked the hall was because they gave us a lot of leeways on food. As Africans, African parents do not like food that does not have season so my mom and his mom specifically said we need to pick a place that will allow us to have some of our food we said okay we will so we ended up picking up the hall on our second time that we went to look for wedding halls and that was again in march we put a down payment which was required on about four thousand dollars down to book the hall the date that we really wanted was August in the middle of August, but that date was already taken. The only date that they had was August the 3rd. So therefore, we looked at the dates. It corresponds with a time of a holiday in Canada and also it corresponds to the festivities, which was OK. There's a festivity in Canada called Caribana. So it respond, it corresponded with those dates. And we were a little bit skeptical of how it's going to be, especially the fact that both churches, my church that I go to and his church that he's going to, he used to go to actually, is a little bit far from the hall. So we had to think quick, what are we what are we going to do for the ceremony? Because the hall was only for the reception. And we had to really think quick what needs to be done in order to 
have a place that's closer for the ceremony because during that weekend that we planned our wedding there's a lot of traffic people come from all over the world for this caribana festivities i don't know if all of you know about it but yeah that's what happened so we put down the down payment and then after that a lot of things were handed to me because when it comes to wedding women we are the ones who plan for it therefore I started looking into different things, visiting places when it, uh, for my wedding dress, because I was told that for the wedding dress, it takes up to eight months. It takes up to eight months for a dress to be fully made, uh, custom made, ordered, because what you see in the shops are only props. And if you buy the props, it means so many people have bought it, have worn the dress and tried it out. So therefore, by December, yeah, by December, I already had everything. I had already had my wedding dress. I already had my decor. So what happened at first, I, had, I was going through a friend who had just launched her business. And she had her own business for wedding planning. So she introduced me to the wedding designer, the wedding decor designer. She introduced me to uh, some makeup artists. And what else she introduced me to? She introduced me to a couple designers for the wedding a couple of wedding designers a couple of uh, uh, planners and for herself she was looking to plan my wedding so what one thing that she helped me with is how to organize so I I was able to learn from her from her the things that I need to do in order to organize my wedding because she did it herself and that's what inspired her to start doing this so therefore in March, when we booked our hall, I had to come up with a budget. The budget is something really important when planning the wedding. So my budget included the cost of the wedding dress, cost of the hall, cost of the makeup, uh, what else, photographers. We just came down with everything in a list so that we know what we need. So once we had the list, we split it into two. So my husband took some of the stuff that he's going to do and I took some of the stuff that I needed to do and pay. So therefore, having that being said, we were able to scale down what needed to be paid first and what came second. And little did we know that when we were doing that, there's a lot of things that we left out that we only came to find out that we had to pay. Okay, we had no recollection of what we we're going to do, especially when it came to where we should take the photos you know i found a place a garden like three months prior to the hall to the wedding and i found the ceremony place at least five months before the wedding because when we were planning it by march the whole entire summer all we did is just work and save work save i remember the entire summer we were not going out we were not doing a lot of activities and he had taken another job just to save and we saved a bunch of money because he was doing two jobs apart from his regular job and for me i couldn't do two jobs because i was the main person going around visiting vendors visiting places so i had visited a lot of caterers so for me i enjoyed planning my wedding because even though i had already found a hall and i had registered myself to this website called wedding wire and in wedding wire a lot of halls send you invitation just so you can go try their food so that you can go talk to the vendors who hosts who can help you host your your wedding or any event that you have at the hall so i enjoyed doing that it was very much fun <laughs> i ate so much food i visited so much halls it was such an amazing amazing thing for me to do and I took sometimes I took my friends and found out how to uh, what I needed to do especially when it comes to planning I, I got a photographer I met a lot of photographer photographers I met a lot of people who sell like wedding dresses of different places and that helped me choose my dress because when you go to this ceremonies it's not only to visit the hall and also when it comes to choosing your cake a lot of people who do cake and catering used to come to those uh, events and they make you taste their food and there's also dancers so I wanted to get exotic dancers not really exotic workers they're like ballerinas and they do have pom-poms 
I wanted to get them. I was already ready to book them. So that was going to be my gift to my husband. But then my friend was like, remember, this is going to be a wedding with African parents. You don't want to be cursed. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. I was going to get them because it was really fun. When I went to visit this halls, I was able to find that you can make your wedding according to what you want. And people used to ask me, what's the theme of your wedding? What's the theme of your wedding? I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't have a theme. I had no idea what theme I'm going for. But what I ended up choosing was a centerpiece. No, I, cho I chose, first of all, two colors, gold and white were my main colors of the day and green greenery uh, not a lot of green just gold white and a few flowers in some table so when i sat down with a decor designer we organized to a fact that at the at the main at the main table where we're sitting there's going to be flowers and at er, each and every other table there's going to be feathers on a golden uh golden stand do you call them stands I hope it's called scent and then the family one the family table will be flowers on those and then the table will be covered in uh, sequin sequin white so yeah so that was uh, that is what i ended up doing so she gave me her budget she gave me the amount and i was like what at first i didn't say yes so i had to compare the price i went to another person who was going to do an even better job than the other lady however his price was up the roof up i'm telling you up the roof so i had to go to three different people just to compare the price and see how much it's going to be and also vinyls vinyls are something that makes your wedding pop i was speculating should i get it or not but when I started looking at many weddings that didn't have vinyls and those that had vinyls, I realized that a vinyl is really beautiful when it comes to taking pictures. You see when it's white and the uh, theme, it matches the theme or you can have your name written onto it. So that's what I chose as well. And the most challenging part of the wedding, which you guys will not believe, was getting bridal party. Yeah. Getting the bridal party together was the hardest thing ever. Even though people look at the wedding and give me compliments and say it looks like they trained for days. It looks like they look so perfect. No, it was not perfect. Just to get people who commit to your, to your vision was hectic. Especially for the bridesmaids. The grooms, my husband has so many friends and... He already had enough people to be on the bridal party on his side and he wanted a huge number which I don't have so many friends like that so I already I already included his sister my sister-in-law who else my my older sister was already married so I didn't include her who else I included a couple of two friends and it was so hard it was so hard sometimes when I think about it <laughs> just it just take me back so much drama i don't know why girls we have so much drama but it was a lot of drama a lot you'll get a girl who's commit who's gonna commit and then two months down the line they're like oh no i don't i don't think i'm gonna be there anymore i have something to do and you're like oh my god what am i gonna do what am i gonna do so i had to ask people to tell me ahead of time if they can buy their dresses and if they can afford to pay for the makeup no, I chose to pay for their makeup because I needed someone. I needed, I just needed girls to come. And I don't have, I didn't have a lot of friends. As you all know, I'm, I moved here when I was about 20 years old and I came from Kenya. So a lot of my friends are in Kenya. Here in Canada, I did not have a lot of friends of my age. And lots of people who are my friends were either older than me or younger than me or far away from Toronto. So that was the challenge. Most of the time, you'll find people who were committed, but not willing to pay. And that was an issue. So when we did our traditional wedding, the bridal party that was there is totally different from the ones we had at the wedding. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. So at the traditional wedding, which, was, which happened in May, we had 14 people. And out of those people, I can say we lost 
about six people and we had to recruit new people to come for the way to play for the to include in our bridal party so that used to stress me and that used to stress my husband and i didn't know when you're planning your wedding that's when you're the most either not sensitive but you're the most um that's when you know your true friends when you're planning your wedding you know your true friends who are able to commit who are able to be like you know what i'm gonna help with this i'm gonna help with that some people just didn't want to help some people i found a girl that I was introduced to she helped me in just putting down everything together just to put up the lineup of what's gonna happen on that day which i'm always gonna be grateful she helped me put down that because as a bride i'm not gonna be a bride and also make sure that uh the lineup everybody follows the lineup so she sent me the lineup what she did is put it all together send it to my husband and send it to me and we all had to read it back to our families and tell them this is what's going to happen at this time at this time at this time and because we know our african families love to be late so we had to play a trick after today they're so mad at us for doing that but that was the only way of doing it because once you're paying your money to those places there is no refund there is no refund and there's, it's time it's also based on time so by the time what i realized in toronto is that there's not too many places that hold ceremonies outside venues that hold ceremonies outside will want you to also book their halls which was challenging because we already had a hall and we only needed a ceremonial place that will be outside so that took me forever i don't think my husband even knows this i'm just maybe he's gonna watch this so it took me about three months i used to be so so oh my god it took me everything within my body to, to find these things and i remember when i was planning the wedding he was working two jobs and i was not driving yet i could not drive i did not have a driving license i only had a g1 a g1 it means that you know your road signs but i could was not allowed to drive but that did not stop me no it didn't stop me i still took his car because <laughs> sometimes i had a friend who used to show me how to drive and i would drive with him seated on that on the, on the passenger seats just watching me so I, there's a day i was like i need to go a place but it was really far and it was winter time that was around august no 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 that was around october 2017 i had to go visit all these vendors you have to physically go there see them sit down tell them your idea and everything so what happened is that i borrowed his car i borrowed his car and i couldn't drive i, I was not allowed to drive but i was like no i don't care i'm gonna do this and he's like i trust you because you know I had demonstrated I can drive even though I was not allowed sometimes I used to take his car and he sit on the passenger seat and I drive so I had to go for this um what was it again I had to visit uh, a bridal uh, boutique I had to visit a bridal boutique and it was really far it was like an hour by bus and 20 something minutes driving so I borrowed his car because I knew it was gonna be at work it was like <laughs> He was like make sure you don't <laughs> destroy my car i'm like no no problem so i took his car i was like i prayed i'm like god be with me i'm going to drive so i took the car i drove guess what i got there safely even though i remember there's a turn there's one point i turned and i really banged <laughs> down there and then i had to come out of the car just to check if i didn't do anything any damage to his car but it was okay i got there on time I got no ticket no police stopped me i was just lucky but that's not the end of it i drove there safe i came back safe and then at one point i remember the next day i had to go visit a second decor planner a designer and i needed a car so there was no more gas in the car and he told me do not put diesel okay you have to put gas so here gas is like i think petroleum petroleum yeah it's like do not put diesel remember that when you go pump gas there's going to be two pumps one for diesel and one for the gas which is petroleum he's like do not put diesel i'm like okay i will not put diesel the next day i wake up i go to work i come back and i'm like okay 
I have to put gas on this car because it was on a Friday. It was on a Friday and I was like, okay, I'm going to put gas in this car and just, and I'm going to drive. I went, I started looking. Did he say do not put diesel or did he say did he, uh, it's diesel? <laughs> Did he say diesel? That I should not put diesel or I should put diesel? I started asking myself, is it diesel? It's not diesel. Is it diesel? It's not diesel. <laughs> oh my God, until today he hates me for that. So I went inside and I asked, I want to put uh, gas. And I said, I want diesel. <laughs> and then the guy at the counter told me, are you, are you sure your car takes diesel? I'm like, yeah. I'm sure it's diesel because something just told me in my mind he must have said diesel and not the other one not gas which is so stupid <laughs> so I took I then I was forcing it down when I was trying to put the gas I'm like why is this gas why is this pump not fitting with the hole of a car and I'm trying and I'm trying like okay my something must be wrong but anyway I just pumped it I pumped I pumped the diesel in the car, which I should not have. I drove the car back and I felt something. I felt something do like, it did something like that. And then I'm like, what's wrong? As soon as I parked the car in the parking lot, the car never turned on anymore. <laughs> The car died on me, but I'm always, I always say I'm lucky that it did not stop on the road. It, not, it did not stop on a green light. It did not stop in the middle of full traffic, but it stopped on the parking lot, which I'm just so lucky like that. I was like, you know what? Thank God. He was so mad at me. He was super mad at me. Anyway, whatever. I was still new. Like, I told him, I'm new. I, I, didn't, I was still new. I had not bought a car by then. I had no car. I had no experience driving. No, a little bit of experience driving, but I had never pumped gas. Never, never, never. So I was like, it's not my fault. It's because you don't show me these things. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges planning the wedding. The car was fixed. He took the car away from me. He's like, I can't trust you with my car anymore. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, but I still need cars to run some errands. I still need a, a car to run some errands. So he, what he started doing, he, <laughs> he took me again. He's like, this is for diesel. This is for gas. When someone tells you to pump gas, you take this one. You see this one, put it inside. You see it fits. You don't have to force it. It fits. Okay. <laughs> when we're planning the wedding, it was so hard. It was there were so many challenges because what you start realizing when you're planning your wedding is that it's you. You have to. It's you, your friends, and your family. And if any of those three people, like those two people, friends and family, are not supportive, it's really hard. So I realized that we had to include our family earlier on. Which for me, I did not include my family earlier on because I don't have a huge family like he did. I had to plan everything by myself. I used to do all the errands by myself. Not even friends did I include because when you have to go see those vendors, you do it during the week. It's during the week that you do this. So therefore, by June, we picked our full uh, our bridal party. Like the guy that everybody loves, he only had three weeks of training because the person who was at his place bounced place in so the guy that you see on the front who's called merveille that every lady loves to talk about yes that guy could not dance the moves he couldn't do the moves i had to show him over and over and over again again for the dance moves it was my okay it was me and one of the bridal party one of the grooms who helped me in in adding some of the moves after so the first few moves on the one minute video that you see those are all the moves that i made and after the second the second one which is the second part that not too many people got to see he he showed me a lot a lot of those moves and that's what we put together so therefore 
that being said it was not easy we it took us two to three practices to perfect the dance and also it took us again a month and a half to do regular practice every weekend in order to come up with those dance moves what ended up happening is that we had to shift couples based on height based on who dances better because some of the people who dance better we had to who dance better were a little bit taller than those who could not dance good so we had to put some people at the back others at the front but god knows why we put merveille merveille was just <laughs> He was perfect and it like you know when you're congolese we always dance but not every congolese dances merve is not a congolese who's into dancing no he's not but he did really a good job and i always i'm always going to be happy merve and uh, no uh naomi naomi was the uh, was the bride maid who was dancing with him she was also a good one and the one who's behind him who is my husband's a nephew who was also good they all danced good and then we had the other guy <laughs> that everybody loves to tease he's nigerian and uh, he came from nigeria like a day before the wedding we had to teach him so fast and then there was another guy who came from tanzania from well from vacation we also had to teach him really really fast he was just in front of the nigerian guy so the nigerian guy is the one who has the golden shoe i'm sure you guys can see <laughs> yeah so it was really good it was really good the day of the wedding was a blessing it was a blessing to all of us because we never thought it's gonna come out like that and I made sure that nobody sees what I'm planning. Like I said, I did not include a lot of people when I was planning the wedding. Nobody knew my theme, nobody knew the colors, nobody knew what I was putting together. So when people were coming, it was just a surprise like, wow, this is good, wow. Like that's what I really wanted because I found out that when I started planning the wedding, a lot of people had so much things to say, do this, do that, and it makes you confused. It gives you, it's, it's so hectic to deal with everybody. So I had to scale down. And I have my friends who came from the US a week before the wedding, and they helped me a lot because when it comes closer to the wedding, I was not eating. I was not eating because it was just a lot. It was a lot. I had to make sure that all the vendors know that the wedding date is on the 3rd of August because some people were not responding because I booked some of them last the year before and in 2018 I remember the lady who was supposed to do my hair she was not responding I was like oh my god what am I gonna do what am I gonna do she was not responding and then I found out that her best friend was shot and it was really it took a it's it's she was dealing with a lot but at the same time because she was not responding i had to find someone a day before the wedding to do my hair my hair and that of the uh, of the bridesmaids so the bridesmaids had to go to a salon and just do a hairstyle like an up to and she responded at 6 p.m a day before the wedding and i already had someone who came to do my who was going to do my hair which was and what else happened yeah the wedding favors so the wedding favors on the table i needed something that matches the theme and i couldn't find something that was what i needed or what i wanted especially the colors i couldn't find it anywhere and what i found was a little bit more expensive so i ordered some stuff from aliexpress and it ended up to be really beautiful i i ordered the wedding favors a month and a half before the wedding and when they came when you touch it it was really beautiful so putting the wedding favors together was oh my god oh lord my friends who came from the u.s because we knew each other from time since we're in kenya we're good friends i always i'm always gonna be grateful for everything they did for me that day so they helped me go get a uh, lot of stuff the last minute things my wedding dress was being tailored oh my god i can't i oh lord so i was telling tailoring my wedding dress 
and the day I was supposed to pick it up, the lady was like, oh no, I'm sorry, it's not ready. And that's two, a day before, that was two days before the wedding. Come tomorrow, that's when it's going to be ready. I'm like, are you serious? I told you guys that the wedding day and you guys don't have it. Even the second dress, my second dress, I found it just randomly. I was not planning to change to change my wedding dress. I was sitting by and I saw the dress was like, no, I'm taking this dress. Like, you know, sometimes you just look at something and it just speaks to you volumes. And that's what happened to me. I just saw the dress and I fell in love with it. It was a little bit longer than me. I'm not too tall. So I found it. And I remember I was with my mom. My mom was like, this is a perfect dress so i took the dress i tried it it was good it was beautiful i'm gonna put a picture here so i took that dress and for the bridesmaids we had to tailor the dresses because we tried to order those dresses the same dress that they're wearing from australia but it was gonna be it's, it was expensive for them and it was going to take forever to get here. So I was like, maybe AliExpress. AliExpress, no, 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 no. We ordered one dress. It was a disaster. <laughs> a disaster. So I was just like, no, we need to have them made. So therefore, we had a lady who made, the same lady who did my traditional wedding dress, did their, their dresses and she's really good. She, she is an award-winning uh, an award winner tailor in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast in her country. She, she used to design dresses and she's perfect, fantastic. I love the way she makes dresses. And what else? For the grooms, the suits that they were going for, because I know a lot of people love those suits. The suits that they were going for, they couldn't find it. They couldn't find and they could not order it because if they ordered some people were a little bit skeptical with ordering so they had to go through someone that we know we all knew and he's called kaba so he made the perfect perfect he chose the perfect 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 suits because that's not the suit that we were going for but when we saw the suit the way it was really good that's what we went for so what else there's a lot of things that I I can't remember that people used to ask me, but especially for the wedding, people wanted to know how much we spent. I can tell you planning a wedding in Canada is expensive. <coughs> yeah, it's really expensive. So for us, we had two, we, we had two options, either to do the wedding or buy a house. And both parents did not want us to live together before the wedding. So we chose to do the wedding and buy a house later which sometimes maybe we should have just bought a house and do the wedding later sometimes i think like that but anyway god knows why it happened like this and apart from that i can just say that it was just wonderful the one minute video made people invited people that we did not know to enjoy our wedding and i'm really grateful to everybody who loved the wedding because Every day people celebrate weddings, but the amount of love that people showed me, I'm so grateful. It's not like it's the best, best, best wedding out there, but people were touched because planning the wedding was something that was really tough for me, especially me. I went through so many trials planning my wedding and I used to pray so much because I was, like it was something really hard and I had little help and I had so much problems alongside planning, uh, apart from planning the wedding, it was so much, like I know if you're a bride or if you've ever got, gotten married, you know how many times that you will be put down for saying this and that, but out of everything, I'm grateful because I took my time to pray. I fasted, I prayed a lot. I prepared myself spiritually because I know weddings are not easy to plan and also two people coming together is something that needs a lot of time and dedication and making sure that you're there for each other and yeah I can say it was not the easiest thing for me my 
it was hard i feel like crying but it was really hard at the same time i enjoyed each and every bit of it because even after the wedding people who came to the wedding were like wow i've never been to a wedding that was so joyful we had a good time and i remember when people were walking to the wedding hall they were like surprised because people who came it was a testimony this is a testimony to show that when you put your mind into something it does not matter what people say it does not matter so i want to inspire people if you're going through something and people don't want to support you it's okay it's okay god has the final answer for you yeah god has the final answer for you and i want to thank everybody who still watches the video and is still inspired and is still happy to watch that video and if you look into my previous video you'll see us doing the practice you can tell that the video is not the best of the best the quality and everything <laughs> But it's okay. People always wonder if the wedding was in Africa or if it was in Europe. It was just in Canada. I don't remember everything that took place at the wedding because when you are the bride, people are pulling you right, left. And I remember even my pastor who was so happy to come and bless our wedding was also like, he was happy to be there. Cause my pastor came and he stayed up to almost the end and then he left because it was good it showed that it's for me to me it showed that he came to support me which was something that i was really really happy because before my wedding i used to go to church at least once once every week during the week just to pray and dedicate everything into god's hand that brings me to the end if you have any questions that you want me to address let me know and i'll make a second video okay Thank you for watching. Bye.